There's a lot more to this story, so don't run away, but let's not mince words to start. Hitman 3 VR Reloaded on Quest 3 is ugly. And I don't mean in a Quest standalone compared to PC or PlayStation ugly. I mean sometimes it looks like it was beaten with an ugly stick within an inch of its life. Buckle up because after spending 15 plus hours in this game over the past week, I have a lot of thoughts. Some good, some bad, and some that might surprise you. I think the best thing to do is not just address it, but get the elephant out of the room first, and that is the visuals. Hitman 3 is widely accepted as a great looking game. And even on PC VR and PlayStation VR, the game looked great in virtual reality. Unfortunately, this time around, it's the exact opposite. And it's not that it always looks atrocious, but there are times when it's actually shocking what the game looks like. For instance, I spent nearly three hours in the mansion level. I'd never completed the detective storyline before in this game, and I took the chance to explore every nook and cranny of this entire level, speak to everyone, find every scratch of evidence, and just had a blast, really, playing through three hours of this game in that one level. But let's talk about the inconsistencies in the level. Unfortunately, walking through the mansion is actually not that bad. There's a lot of pop-in in this game. But let me first state before we continue on that day four after this game launches, we're getting a patch that drastically fixes that pop-in issue. Here is some footage shared to me from the developers of what the game is actually going to look like after the fix and I'll put it side by side with some footage of the actual game without the fix. You can see drastically much less pop-in, and it actually has 500 NPCs on the screen at one time in the Berlin level, which is absolutely nuts, and I can't wait to see that in VR. One of the things that holds this back, I think, is the environments and the pop-in, because what's happening is as you're walking closer to something, the environment adds the elements that actually makes it look decent. For instance, in the Dubai level, you're seeing two different things here, side by side. One on the left is the before and the one on the right is after and you can see that there's a much more living world. Now it doesn't change the visual quality of the assets in the game and we'll talk about that in a second but what it does do is it makes the world feel more alive and visually more pleasing because there is way less pop-in and you're not walking up to a tree that looks like a triangle and it turns to leaves or a car that looks like a box and it turns to a car which was pretty consistently what happened in the game. So back to the mansion level, you'll be walking through the mansion and it doesn't look half bad aside from the pop-in. It actually looks pretty good, even though it is a different art style. And the character models don't look that bad either. The art style works well for them. But you'll do something like walk into the bedroom where Zachary lived and died, and you'll see that the room looks totally different. It looks unfinished to me. It's not lit. It doesn't have the same types of textures. I don't know what happened with this with this room. It's one of the rooms in the house. I think it's the only one that looks like this, and I'm not sure why. And the same thing happens when you walk out on a balcony. In fact, exteriors just don't look great in most parts of this game. Hopefully, we'll get some updates that'll fix that. We do have visual updates coming for Quest 3, and I don't know when that's coming, but that is part of the plan. And we'll get into more about what's actually coming for the game later on in updates as we get into the actual gameplay elements as there are some fixes and stuff coming and some things that probably aren't coming based on how the game engine works, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. So back to the graphics. In this level specifically, you'll walk out on a balcony and it'll just completely change and there are some rooms where the the rooms are so dark it's hard to see and that is a thing that's being fixed in the day four patch adjusting the lighting but overall especially in that first training level on the boat you'll jump into that and it was actually shocking to me now visuals are only one aspect of it and we're going to talk about why even though it visually doesn't look good I was pulled back to the game and I played 15 or more hours of this game just because I wanted to. That wasn't my intention. I was just going to play the game and do a gameplay video. I ended up playing obscenely more than I expected. And that has to do a lot with the backbone of this game, the fact that Hitman 3 is a fantastic game and its roots that IO Interactive made. But we'll go more into that when we get to the gameplay elements. Lighting is 
really non-existent in a lot of areas. In the Berlin level, there is some really cool lighting with the you know the lights that shine around, and there's some uh, baked lighting on the environments that you'll start to notice. I hope that we get an increase in that in some of these updates. It would be great to see more of that. I know the NPCs are taking up a massive amount of power because there is an insane amount of NPCs in every single level. And just like in Hitman 3, they've all got their own elements to them, their own story. And there's a lot going on in this. So we'll get to that when we talk about the story elements of this game and why it's so amazing on Quest. I don't want to beat a dead horse too much. Just know, visuals, not the strong point of Hitman 3 VR Reloaded. A lot of times, it looks unfinished and unpolished. But hopefully, it was just... The fact of having to get the game out based on outside pressure or needing to get it out there and updating it over time. If visuals are the only reason you play VR, you're not going to want to play Hitman 3 VR Reloaded. I'd stick with the PC VR version if you can do that because it's visually a lot more pleasing. Aside from visuals, there is a lot more to this story. And by a lot, I mean like an obscene amount. And it's the reasons that I wanted to play this game. Not because of the visuals, obviously, although there are times when the visuals, I will admit, actually look pretty good, and eventually you get used to the way things look, and you just kind of melt into the story and into the game because it is extremely immersive, and the world is so alive. So let's talk about the world being alive for a second. The gameplay experience, not the interactions, we'll talk about that later, there's some issues with that too, but the actual world of Hitman 3 is incredible. The game comes with the base levels, so it's just the base Hitman 3 game, not World of Assassination or uh, any of the DLC. Although I did hear some rumblings that DLC is coming to the game, so keep your eyes open for that if you want those things. But this game world is massive, and every level is full scale, so that's big. Even just the mansion level or the Dubai level, they're very large, and there are no loading sequences between any spots in those levels. So you have an entire open sandbox. Speaking, speaking of sandbox, the sandbox itself of this game is completely intact. You can approach the missions any way that you want to. That includes, you know, taking out someone and taking their uniform, uh, using, you know, crazy methods to, to take somebody out, dropping a chandelier on someone's head like I did in the mansion level. Everything that's in the actual game is all here, which I think is probably one of the things that brought me back to it and makes it most impressive. If you love the Hitman sandbox elements, then you probably will very much enjoy this game if you can look past the way it looks right now. There are some other elements that will potentially hold you back a little bit when it comes to mechanics, but again, we'll talk about that in a second. The world is a living, breathing world, and it consistently stays that way, even on Quest 3, which is an amazing feat, really, on a standalone headset. Yes, visually, I would prefer it to look much better, but when it comes to the game world, I couldn't have asked for a better transition over because it's all there. It's all intact. You can walk around any of these places. All the NPCs are there. They're doing their own things. They've got their own conversations. You can eavesdrop on anyone that's talking. In fact, there's so much story and character piece stuff there for you to listen to in some of these levels that I got lost in just listening to what the NPCs were talking about. Just standing at the bar while you're listening to people talking around you. And one of the best parts about that in Hitman is sometimes you'll hear things that'll help with your mission. And that's how I got roped into doing certain things in certain levels because it opens up new opportunities. For instance, the guy in the Berlin parking lot looking for his bike with his you know, allergy medicine get you into the club without having to sneak in. Uh, the drug dealer that you knock out inside the club and you take his uniform and his medicine get you other story elements. And there's so much of that in this game that's consistently working and weaving that it really envelopes you and it becomes an immersive experience outside of the visuals. It really encapsulated me. I played more with my Bobo strap and battery, link in the description if you want to play for six hours or more at a time, that I've played in a VR game in a long time. And, and I had a desire to go back more consistently since Asgard's Wrath 2 that hasn't happened to me uh, in this way. Which surprised me because every time I put the headset on, I was like, you. You know, it just doesn't look good. But then I'd start playing and be like, man, I, I love this game. And I don't, I, don't know, I don't know visuals have a lot to do with it. And there's other elements that we're going to talk about. I'm not saying that this is a must-have game, but personally, 
I was falling in love with the world of the game. And I think that's a huge testament to how amazing Hitman 3 is, flat screen, how good of a job IO Interactive did. The spine of Hitman 3 is there, and that makes the game extremely good, even if the visuals are not there where they should be. So the world is alive. All the elements are there. You can pick anything up that you would be able to pick up in the actual game. Physically hit people over the head with a wrench, you know, drop a banana on the floor so they slip on it, remove a sign where it says that there's water so that someone slips and falls. Uh, you can choke people with your hands. Oh, well, I'm getting into gameplay elements. Hold on. We'll get to mechanics in just a second. All this stuff is there for the sandbox, and it is what makes this game so much fun and replayable. Now, let's talk some about mechanics as it relates to the gameplay as well, because as I mentioned, you could do things like walk up behind someone and choke them to knock them out. Uh, that can be a little finicky sometimes if you're not slow about it, because sometimes I would go up a little too fast. What happens is when you bring your hands close to their neck, uh, Agent 47's hands kind of cup like he's going to choke them, so you know when you can pull the grip button to choke them out. And if you don't wait for that to happen, you can accidentally smack them, and you slap them, and then they become alerted and you can't choke them anymore. Yeah, that happened several times to me, so just keep an eye on that. Otherwise, you're going to get frustrated. But you can choke them out. Uh, you can hit them over the head and knock them out. You can punch them and knock them out if you hit them with your fist. There are all those combat elements. All the guns are there that you can use. Now, before we move forward, let's talk about the guns, and then we'll talk about the rest of the gameplay. The gunplay in this game isn't bad. It actually works fairly well. I love holding pistols in this game. I actually enjoy using them. All of the reloading in this game currently is auto-reload. So you're going to press a button and it's going to reload for you with an animation just like in the game. That is one of the things coming that they're working on for a future update is manual reloading. Honestly, the way I play the game, I don't shoot all that much anyways. So I, I didn't even remember that until I started playing the Berlin level and got into trouble. Uh, and ended up in a firefight like you're seeing on screen here. And some of the guns actually feel really good, even though the reloading is automatic. The guns themselves feel okay. The shotgun is just an automatic shotgun. You don't actually pump action that. You're just going to keep firing until it's empty and then use the auto-reload button. I liked the pistol grip shotgun. That was actually one of my favorites. One weird thing that I found is when you're two-handing a rifle or like a shotgun... Uh, you can move it back and forth, but it doesn't twist. I know that sounds weird, but your hands are locked. So, like, you can move it up and down and back and forth and point it wherever you want, but you can't, like, twist the gun like you would in a normal VR game and, like, twist it and look at the side or twist it and look at the bottom. It's a little weird. Uh, it felt strange. Maybe they'll be able to update that. Just something I wanted to call out that I noticed. The Other than that, the gunplay feels pretty good. Uh, aiming seems to be okay. One thing to note, when you're using a sniper rifle, you are going to bring the rifle up to your face, and it's going to change to a black screen with a reticle, that, which feels a little strange. And that was kind of off-putting. I wish that it was a regular, you know, sniper rifle scope you're looking through, but I'm guessing they just transitioned over the game and didn't change that. That's why it looks like that, which is what it is. That's the way the game plays, and if that's what the engine requires. A lot of these things I'm going to talk about in gameplay elements, and I'm sorry for the long tooth video. I wanted to go in-depth with this. A lot of the gameplay elements in this game that they brought over are not able to be specifically VR like we know them because of the way the engine works. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the ragdoll physics of these people that you're going to be able to knock out. When it comes to the scope, that's what happens anyways with the sniper rifle. The same thing happens with your camera. When you pick up your camera and you take it out of your inventory, you put it up to your face, it turns black. So it's a little off-putting. It does work, but it's not my favorite thing. Speaking of the inventory, the inventory management is actually not bad. You're going to hit the button on your left. I think it's the X button. I can't remember which one it is. It's going to pop the inventory up. You can cycle through your inventory, and you can either hit the grip button on the left or right controller to immediately grab that item, which be careful if you do that and you're standing in front of someone and you grab a gun out of your inventory, or if you pull the trigger button, it puts it into your quick slot, which I actually like because it allows me to put things in my quick slot without grabbing them which is really helpful when you don't want somebody to see what you're grabbing. You have a quick slot at the end of your hands on either wrist, left and right, and you can put one item in each of those. They can hold any item, so it could be something big even. Uh, it doesn't matter. You're just going to put it in the slot, and you just 
grab it to take it out with your grip button, and you put it back. Inventory management actually works pretty well. There is no full body avatar in this game. It is just hands. Uh, I've talked about that before. The watch on your wrist works pretty well to actually show you what costume you're wearing, and your gloves do change, or your hands change, if you're wearing something that has gloves specific to the costume. Other than that, you just have your regular Agent 47 hands. The watch also works as a map, and you can see your notifications for what you're supposed to be doing on your watch as well. Now, when it comes to the gameplay as far as, like, other NPCs and interacting with them, uh, they actually work pretty well as far as, like, knocking them out and, you know, shooting them to, to get rid of them. And they are good AI. The NPCs are good, just like in the, the base Hitman game. They're, they're the same thing as, as Hitman 3, they're the flat screen game. When it comes to, like, hiding them and dragging them, it's a little different. In fact, all of, there's in fact there's a lot of gameplay elements in this. I should preface this that use the A button instead of physically interacting with things. A lot of that has to do with the way that the engine works and the way that the game plays in a flat screen manner. So like when you go up to a door in a flat screen, you can hit a button and it opens. The same thing happens in this game. You're going to walk up to a door and hit A and it's going to open up the door. You can actually reach to the handle or to the door and pull the grip button, and it'll do the same thing. So you don't have to pay attention to that. But I actually found that uh, I stopped doing that after a little while and just used the A button because I'm lazy and because it actually isn't that big of a deal not to have to grab every single door handle and open it if I'm just playing the game to immerse myself in the world. I found myself not caring all that much. Same thing with vaulting over things. The same thing with hiding in a spot. It's holding down on the A button to hide, activating certain things. Now, there are certain buttons and switches and stuff like that in the game that you'll actually physically be able to push. Uh, like you can actually hit a button and it'll open a door or you know keypads, things like that. But a lot of the elements are using the A button. And that's the same thing with picking up a costume off the ground, uh, off of someone. Uh, dragging them doesn't use the A button. You actually use the grip button. But what happens is you hold down on the grip button, and it grabs the leg with two hands. So you don't have control over your hands at that point. You can move your hands up and down and kind of swing the body around some. But you're going to drag them over to a hiding spot, and you're going to hold the A button to stuff them in the hiding spot. That doesn't bother me, really, because it would be really annoying to try to stuff someone into a hiding spot, especially some of these chest freezers or lock with your hands and it would take a long time so that doesn't really bother me but a lot of elements in the game do use that a button to interact with whether it's climbing up something speaking of climbing let me mention this really quickly the climbing does feel a little weird you hit the a button to activate your climbing and you can either grab with your controllers although you don't see your hands and pull yourself up and it, it kind of feels weird you can't fall or you use the analog stick. I ended up just using the analog stick to go up because I didn't really care to pull and grab myself. I told you, I'm a gamer from like old fashioned gaming. So sometimes I don't mind elements in a game that actually make being lazy okay. <laughs> I love VR and the immersion of it. And I love the fact that you can immerse yourself and grab things and you know physically do things. But sometimes I don't mind the balance of not having to do all of it. So that kind of sets you up for the gameplay elements. The game itself, uses the A button fairly consistently for a lot of the different things, whether it's pulling alarms, you know, whether it is sabotaging something, turning something on to cause an alert, or any number of different things. A lot of that is with the A button, either holding or tapping, depending on what the interaction is. So we've covered visuals and graphics. We've covered the game itself and how it's transitioned over, and now we've covered the gameplay mechanics. Okay, now let's just talk about a couple of miscellaneous things. Number one, the menu system is a flat menu. It's the same menu from the other flat version of Hitman. You just interact with it with like a laser pointer or scroll through it using your thumbstick. Also, the cutscenes are all flat as well. They'll pop up on the screen in kind of like a black theater, and you'll watch them, and you can skip them, but all the cutscenes are not interactive. They're just flat screen. So here is the sticky thing for me, okay? I find myself in a love-hate relationship with this game because I love the game itself based on all the work that IO Interactive did to create a world. I even love a lot of the choices that were used to bring the game into VR, the interactions, even some of the little things like how when you hide from your mark, you know, you hold the A button and you activate, you're standing at a table or whatever or in a crowd, you can grab your drink and move it around uh, instead of, you know, just it being an animation. Little things like that, being in the actual world. But then again, when you jump into the game, I always have to tell myself, okay, 
visually I know this is going to not look good. And it consistently surprises me that it doesn't look good more than I expected it to. Which is really sad because the core game elements here actually are fantastic. And I think that the game itself, playing on a standalone headset, is mind-blowing. Uh, like, as far as I this is the first time this game has been ported to a standalone VR device. It, it's on PC VR and PlayStation VR. But the fact that you can play the entire campaign of the original Hitman 3 game in VR with all of the elements is darn impressive. It would just be more impressive since it's standalone Quest 3 only if the visuals looked better. And that is my love-hate relationship with it. I love the gameplay. There are mechanics that I also have a love-hate relationship with. There are things that I wish were better and different, and a lot of those are getting updates and patches. And the visuals make this sticky for me. Because I know a lot of people out there are going to say that they're not going to buy the game based on the visuals. And that is totally valid if that's the way you feel. But I will be completely honest with you. Regardless of the visuals, I'm going to continue to play this game. Because I really enjoy being able to put on a headset, become Agent 47, and do everything I would normally be able to do on a flat screen in VR. And it feels amazing to be in that world, even if it doesn't look the same or nearly as good as I would like it to. Hopefully, patches will be coming. In fact, I know personally the developer is working on update patches as we speak to make the game look better. If you're worried about visuals, you can always wait, and I will do an update video later on when the visual patches release, because as someone that's been enjoying this game, I really want more people to enjoy it. So if the visuals get an upgrade, I think that the game will be well worth playing, especially if we can get some of these mechanics updated as well. There are bugs in the game and issues, like with any other game, that could be squashed and fixed, and hopefully they will be. The LOD is the biggest thing for me, being able to get less pop in. That's day four. We're getting that patch, and as you can see in the videos I showed, it is a lot better when it comes to that. But actually, immersing yourself in this world is really easy because of how alive these worlds feel, more so than most games on Quest, even though the visuals aren't as, pre aren't as impressive as some other games. So fingers crossed, we can get some visual updates and everything will be all good to go, but it really does feel good to be Agent 47 for real.